Hey guys, this is Chubbs back again with another ZDoom ACS scripting tutorial and today I'm going to be teaching you all about variables and conditional statements. Uh, these are very important things and they're going to allow you to do many more things with your scripts. Uh, and in a nutshell, variables store information and then conditional statements allow you to uh, ask questions about what that information is and then take different uh, actions depending on the results that you get. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to show you all the sample map that I have. Uh, this is a modified version of the sample map from the uh, first tutorial. Uh, you can see we still have the starting room here with the player facing the switch. However, uh, I've removed the door here. I also removed the second door that we added on the right altogether. Uh, but I've removed the door here over on the left and instead I've turned this into like a passage that leads into another room. Um, and so what we're going to do uh, we're going to change the script that uh, is currently attached to this switch. Right now this is pretty much the same script as in the first tutorial. And then uh, after we uh, write a brand new script for this, we're going to come in here and we're going to write a script that we attach to these two switches. And this script is going to make it so that both of these switches have to be flipped before this door opens. So we're going to make like a, a double switch door. Um, so first of all, let's write a brand new script for this switch. So currently, if we go into the script editor by clicking this icon up here, um, I'm also just going to increase the text size for you guys. If we go in here, you can see that script 1, which is what the uh, switch currently has, is uh, printing a message and then opening a door. Well, we don't have the door there, so we're just going to get rid of that. And I also don't want it to print that message anymore. So we're just going to empty out this script. We'll leave the braces because we're going to come back down here. Uh, but we're just going to make this an empty script and then come back to it and, and add on to it. Uh, but before we add anything to this script, we're going to come up here to the top between the script and our uh, sort of mandatory uh, includes ecom and ACS line. And we're going to create a variable up here. So like I said, a variable pretty much stores information and you can store different types of information. Now if you go to the ZDoom uh, wiki, uh, on the main page here you can see a link that says ACS reference. If you go there and then scroll down you'll see a sub pages category and here you can click variables and data types. And this will sort of tell you about the different uh, types of variables that you can create. So you have integers which are pretty much just numbers, they can be positive and negative. Uh, you have booleans. These can pretty much only be either true or false, so these are really good for uh, switch situations. We're going to be using these booleans here for the double switch door. Um, characters, which are just like a, a, a character is pretty much just like a single letter or a single number or a single uh, uh, special character. Uh, strings, which are a collection of characters. Strings would be like uh, several words, uh, several characters. Uh, you can really put anything in a string that you want, numbers, letters, characters, whatever. And then fixed point numbers, which uh, a fixed point is actually, you make a fixed point number or a decimal number the same way you would an integer. You just pretty much, you type the integer and then a period and then whatever you want to come after the decimal. So, uh, you know, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to make a variable differently for fixed point variables, but I guess this is here just to let you know that fixed point variables are supported. Uh, but all that out of the way, we're going to be focusing on integers and Boolean variables. And I'm going to sort of talk to you guys about how you make them and how you manipulate them. So we're going to come back here to our map and let's go back to the script editor. And uh, something important about variables is you want to create them, uh, in most cases at least, up top here. Uh, above your scripts because if you create a variable inside of a script then only that script can access it. Uh, the other scripts will not be able to see it. Uh, if you put it at the top here though as long as it's outside of all the scripts uh, every script is going to be able to see it and manipulate it and things like that. Um, that's referred to as scope in programming uh, and that's a very important concept so you know if you want a variable to be accessed by all of your scripts make sure it's above all of them and a good place to put them is just right here at the very top like I said just put it uh, below the include line 
but above your scripts. So to create a variable, first you type uh, what type of variable it is. So if we want to make an integer, integer variable, which is just a number, we would just type the word int and then space. And then you type the name of the variable. Uh, so let, let's just call this variable score, just for the heck of it. And uh, sp then you can do space. And then if you want to make this equal to something, you just type equals space and then the number that you want it to be equal to. Uh, so if we want score to uh, start out at zero, we can just type zero. And then make sure you type a semicolon. Uh, going back to the first tutorial, don't forget your semicolons at the end of almost every line that you type. There will be a few lines that you won't need semicolons at the end of, but in most cases you'll definitely want to put them there. Uh, so what we've done is we have declared an integer variable called score and we have set it to zero. Um, and so from now on, if you want to access this variable in your script, you would just type the name of it. So you would just type score. So what we're going to do, we're going to rewrite the uh, switches script here, which is script one, so that when you flip the switch, it increases score and then it tells you what its value is. So to uh, change the, the value of a, of a variable, uh, what you do is you first type the variable name, so we would type score, and then you can type equals, and then whatever you want it to be equal to. If we just want to set it directly to a number, you can type one. So like we could type, for example, 100, and what this would do is when this script runs, score then just becomes 100. And if you run this script again, it's still just going to set it to 100, which really won't change anything. Uh, if you want to increment it, though, or add to it, what you can do is you can type score equals score plus however much you want to add to it. And you can do the same for subtraction. Uh, but if we want to add 1 to score, we would just type 1. And so what we're saying here is when this script runs, take score and make it equal to what it currently is plus one. So after this line of code here, score is equal to you know whatever it is plus one. So in this case, since we default it to zero, if we run this script the first time, this is this line here is going to run, and then it's going to be equal to one because zero plus one is one. Uh, if we run this script again, uh, then in this case it would be basically saying 1 plus 1 and so score would then become equal to 2 so it just keeps going up. Uh, now there's also a shorthand way of typing this and to do that you can type score plus equals 1. So that is the same thing as this line. These two do the same exact thing. The shorthand is a little more difficult to sort of understand or read if you're a beginner uh, but it's pretty handy if you want to save space and type something out really quickly. And again, you can do the same with subtracting. So if we want to subtract one, we could do score minus one, or we could do score minus equals one. But let's go ahead and let's do sort of what I said uh, just a few minutes ago. Let's add one to score. We'll just do the longhand way instead of doing the shorthand. And then let's tell the, tell the player uh, what score currently is. And we're going to do that with the print function that we used in the first tutorial. So let's type print. And if you remember in the first tutorial uh, for type, we typed s because we wanted to do a string. Uh, and the reason we wanted to do a string is because, you know, a, a string is a collection of characters. So like if you want to type out a sentence or something, you're going to use a string. Uh, in this case, though, we're dealing with an integer, not a string. So instead of typing s, we're going to type i for integer, and then colon, and then expression, which is what uh, information you want it to have. So for us, this is going to be score. So it's referring to the score variable. And then don't forget the semicolon. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and comment this. You don't need to for something as simple as this, but I'm going to do it anyway. So we're going to say increment score. That's what this line does. And then for this comment, we're just going to say uh, print the value of score. All right, so pretty, pretty much self-explanatory. So when this script runs, 
we're adding one to score and then we're printing what it is on the screen so let's go ahead I think we've still got it tied to this switch I'm just gonna make sure yep so we've still got it tied I'm gonna make this repeatable that way we can keep flipping the switch and increasing the variable and it's still set to player presses use so let's go ahead and run this map and see what happens <laughs> So you can see, uh, as we flipped the switch and ran that script, it took score and it added one to it and then it printed what its new value was. So that is how you take variables and manipulate them. You can uh, add one, uh, you could multiply one or, or some other number, you could divide, you know, you can do all that stuff. And this is going to come in handy here in just a little bit when we start using conditional statements because that's when that's when variables really become powerful uh, because you can uh, test what their value is and then like I said you can react differently according to the uh, result of that test so let's go ahead and let's move over to our switches here we're just gonna ignore this area of the map and we're gonna focus on this one and like I said we want it so that uh, both of these switches have to be flipped in order for this door to open so this is where conditional statements are going to come into play uh, so first of all let's create um, let's open up the script editor let's create two brand new variables and they're going to be boolean variables this time instead of integers and like I said uh, boolean variables can be either true or they can be false and so what we're going to do we're going to create our first boolean variable by typing the word bool space and then we can name it anything we want in this case I'm gonna have both of these variables refer to the switches so to make it more clear I'm just gonna type a uh, uh, switch one flipped and notice the way that I sort of typed out this variable notice that the starting letter is lowercase and then for each new word I've put it I've put the uh, you know like the new letter in uppercase I think this is referred to as camel notation or something like that but this is a convention that you will notice a lot in programming so uh, like if we had uh, all kinds of different words like uh, some sort of long variable name like uh, player was hurt by demon notice the way that I type that the first letter is lowercase and each uh, each first letter of you know each new word is uppercase so that's that's something that's important to sort of get used to and normally you really want to avoid overly long variable names like this the best thing to do try and keep the variable name as short as possible but also as descriptive as possible sometimes that's difficult to do uh, but you know after some practice you can kinda of get it down I think this is a pretty good example here uh, this is pretty short and it's also pretty descriptive uh, but coming back to where we were sort of got off track there a little bit let's make switch one flipped equal to false by default because again boolean variables can be either true or false so instead of typing a number or a uh, set of words in quotations we're just gonna type the word false and then semicolon so uh, switch one flipped is created and then it's just set to false because we don't want this switch to be flipped uh, by default when the map starts we want it to start as as being not flipped or as being considered not flipped then let's come down and let's just make another variable let's call this switch to flipped and let's do the same let's make this false so we've created two boolean variables switch one flipped and switch to flipped and they're both false now let's come down and we're gonna write a brand new script let's do script 2 and I'm gonna show you guys something really cool here with what are called uh, arguments or also parameters so normally we would type void but here we're gonna do something a little bit different so what we're gonna do is we're going to type int and then we're gonna type uh, switch number and so this is gonna look really confusing right now but what we have done 
is we have created a variable here and what we're saying is whenever script2 runs we're going to send it an integer and this integer is going to go by the alias or by the name of switch number and then inside this script if we want to we don't even have to but if we want to we can run a test on whatever this integer is that's passed in and then we can take different actions uh, depending on what that is so this sort of teaches you now why you can have something other than void inside these parentheses so if you have void I think I said this in the first tutorial it means that no information is passed to the script it just does whatever's inside the script but if you have something inside here uh, that that something being a variable then if you want to here inside the script you can you can test what that variable is and basically in a nutshell what this allows you to do is to have a script that behaves differently depending on the information that it receives and I'm going to show you guys right here how we how exactly we pass that information to it so let's compile this script first of all you can see we compiled without any errors uh, and we actually we, we compiled not one script but all of these scripts so we just compiled everything here we also compiled like the variables and such uh, but here's how we would pass the information into it so let's go to the first switch pull up its properties and let's give it a script execute action let's also make sure that player presses use is checked and I don't think we want this to be repeatable so we'll just leave this unchecked let's change the script to 2 because that's the new script that we wrote and here is the really cool part so you know what let's sort of backtrack here let's change this to script 1 notice that right here it says script argument 1 now I want you to notice something here watch when we change this back to switch 2 notice that now instead of script argument one it says switch number remember that if we pull up our script editor the argument or the parameter that we gave this has an integer that goes by the name of switch number so this is referring to that argument so we can say when this script executes when this switch is flipped let's pass it a number because remember it, it is an integer let's say we want to pass a number of one we can type one click OK and now whenever we flip this specific switch switch number is going to be basically one so all throughout this script whenever this script runs if we type switch number anywhere inside it this is going to be seen as one and to prove this to you guys what we can do we can put a print statement in here we can do I colon and then let's type switch number let's compile this and now let's go ahead and flip this switch and if all when is planned what will happen is uh, one will be printed on the screen so let's test it out <laughs> All right, so you can see that when we flip that switch, one came up on the screen. Now, let's go to this switch. Let's give it the same script. So we'll make it say script execute, script two. Also make sure that player presses use is the activation for it. And instead of one, we're gonna say two. So when this specific switch is flipped, switch number, is seen as two throughout this script so now check this out I'm gonna go back and play the map again and we're gonna flip each switch and let's see what happens so notice that when we flip this switch one was printed because we have set this argument or parameter to be one and then when we flip this switch two was printed because that's the argument or the parameter that we have set up for it to to be equal to be equal to 
So that's a very powerful, very important topic. Um, you know, I, I wasn't sure initially if I would include this in this video because it is a little more advanced, but it does uh, involve variables because that's exactly what this argument or parameter is. It, it's just a variable that you are passing to the script. And this also goes back to the scope thing that I talked about earlier. Switch number is only going to be visible in this script. If we go up here, like if we try and say switch number equals 10, if I try to compile this, it's giving me an error because it doesn't know what switch number is. This script has no idea what switch number is. Uh, switch number only exists in this script because that's it. That's its scope. You know, it's the variables right here, so only this script can see it. So I want to make that clear also. But uh, there's a great reason that I decided to go ahead and show us this because this is going to play right in to our double switch door. So what we can do is we can transition over to conditional statements to take different actions according to what switch number is. So basically, uh, in other words, we can take different actions according to whichever switch is flipped uh, without having to have more than one script. So this one script is going to be doing several things for us. So going back to conditional statements, which we haven't really gotten into much yet, like I said earlier in the video, conditional statements allow you to ask what variables are and then take actions according to you know their value. So in this case, we're going to run a conditional statement on switch number, and we're going to ask what it is. So the most common conditional statement, and the only one that we're really going to cover in this video, is the if-then statement. This one is used all the time throughout programming, and it's really easy to understand. So to make, or to write out this conditional statement, first you write the word if, space, and then quotations. And inside these quotations is what you're going to be asking. So let's make this really simple here. We're going to ask if switch number is equal to 1. So let's type switch number equals. This time we're going to be using a double equal sign. We'll come to this here in just one second. And then 1. And then let's put a new pair of braces. So what we're asking here is if switch number is equal to 1, and if this evaluates to true, then whatever's inside these specific braces, whatever's inside these braces right here, will run. And going back to these double equal signs here, you always want to use these if you are running a conditional statement and asking a question. The difference between these and the single equal sign is that the single equal sign is an assignment operator. What you do with these is you uh, assign a certain value to a variable. So for example up here we're saying switch one flipped equals false. We are assigning false to switch one flipped. Here however we're just asking a question. We're asking is switch number equal to one? So that's the difference between two equal signs and one. So going back to our statement here we're gonna say if this argument equals 1, then take this variable here, switch 1 flipped, and make it true. So we're going to, just going to type switch 1 flipped equals true. And then, how about we just write another conditional statement and sort of do the same thing for switch 2. Let's say if switch number is equal to 2 and if that evaluates to true then switch to flipped is equal to true. So depending on what the argument is that comes in different things can happen. If the argument is 1 then this is true and therefore our switch 1 flip variable becomes true instead of being false which is what it's set to by default. If, however, the argument is 2, then switch to flip becomes true. Now you can also have 
an else statement that comes after uh, that comes after an if statement. So we could say, uh, let, let's go up to let's go up here to our first if statement. So we could, you know, we first ask if switch number is equal to one, and then if it if that's true, then we set switch one flip to true. We could then say else, and then a new pair of braces. Then we could just do something else here. So this only happens if this isn't true. Uh, and another thing you can do is you can do an else if. So we could do else if, uh, let's say if switch number equals two, just like down here. And we could do switch to flip equals true. And this really, in, in this specific case, is going to have the same exact result. So we'll just go ahead and we'll get rid of this second if statement. And so what this does is it sort of runs through the results. And you can do several else ifs. So we could do else if switch numbers equal to 3. And we don't have a switch 3 flip variable. So if we try and, if we try and do this, the compiler is going to complain and it's not going to compile because uh, we don't have a variable called that but this is just an example like you could go you could go down you 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 aren't limited to just one else if statement you can do several else ifs you can do as many as you want and you could even at the very end you can have just an s an else statement and this this pretty much doesn't have any kind of if condition so this is going to run this this is guaranteed to run if none of these if statements are true so if you know if if you want something that's absolutely guaranteed to happen, you know if none of these if statements are true, then you can just do else. Um, but here, going back to what we have sort of modified it to, we're now asking here when this script runs, if switch number is equal to one, then set switch one flip to true. Else, it's going to ask another question. So in other words, if this is not true, it's, it's just going to ask us another question. It's going to ask else if switch number is equal to 2, then if that's true, set switch 2 flipped to true. And if neither of these are true, then it just goes down below and the script just kind of exits because nothing else happens below. So it's compile it. You can see it compile without any errors. And right now, if we run this script, nothing's going to happen. Uh, these variables will be changed to true, but we're not printing anything on the screen. And we're not doing any kind of actions in the map, so you're not going to notice any results. However, this is where the door opening code is going to come into play. So what we're going to do is down below these if statements, we're going to ask one last if statement or one last question, and this is going to be a really important one here. We're going to ask if switch one flipped is equal to true, because remember, switch one flipped is a Boolean, and just to make sure you guys aren't confused here, uh, this is a Boolean, and switch number is an integer. Remember, switch number, this is our argument that we're passing in, and you know that's why we're using a number here. And uh, both switch one flipped and switch two flipped, which we have up here at the top. This is where we created them. They are booleans. They cannot be. Uh, I, I think they actually can be numbers if you wanted to. Like for example, uh, just in the case of a boolean, I think uh, one is true and zero is false. I think you can do it that way. But you know, just to be uh, just to be clear, it's usually best to just use the word true or false. Um, I just wanted to clear that up though that uh, switch number is an integer so this can be anything. Uh, it doesn't just have to be 0 or 1. It can be any number. It can even be negative. Uh, but anyways we got sidetracked there. We'll come right back down here. So we're asking if switch 1 flipped is equal to true and switch 2 flipped is equal to true then we're going to say open up that door. You can see right here this door has a tag of 1 and we're just going to use the door open code that we had in the first script or in, in, in the first tutorial I meant to say. So we're just going to say door underscore open because remember that's what the door open function is. 
and it has a tag of 1. Uh, speed, we're just going to do 32, and light tag, we're not going to use, so we're just going to make this 0. And don't forget the semicolon. Speaking of which, notice that we don't have semicolons after our if statements. Like I said, some lines will not have semicolons, but, you know, if you're uh, using, if you're messing with a variable or you're typing a function like door open, you're going to have a semicolon at the end, so make sure you don't forget it. But going back to this new line of code that we added here, you'll notice something funky here. You'll notice that we have two ampersand symbols. This is referred to, uh, I think it's referred, referred to as the AND operator. And what this basically does is it allows you to combine variables and ask if uh, more than one variable is equal to something. So in this case, both of these have to evaluate to true in order for the code below to run. So uh, to put it another way, in order for door open to run, switch one has to be a uh, switch one flipped has to be true, and switch two flipped has to be true. If only one of these is true, then it's not going to run. It's just going to evaluate this is this whole line here is going to evaluate to false and this is going to be ignored and the script's just kind of going to kind of going to exit because there's nothing else that comes after it uh, there's also something that's called the or operator and this just te this basically just test if either of them is true and to to write that out you do two like vertical lines i'm not sure what this character is called uh, but it's like the vertical line character right below your backspace key. And in this case, since it only needs one to be true, remember, I, I, remember like I said, this just tests if either of these is true. Here, if we left this in here, uh, the door would open, you know, right as soon as we just flipped one of the switches. Uh, so we don't want that. Uh, but I wanted to tell you guys about this operator because, you know, like if you want something where only one of the variables has to be true, you can have that in there, but we want this to be the AND operator because we do want both of these to be flipped. So let's compile the script. We've done quite a bit here. I think I've maybe gotten too far ahead of myself. Hopefully I haven't confused you guys too much, especially if you're complete beginners. But what we're going to do is we're just going to recap this real quick and then we're going to run the map and we're going to see what happens. So when script 2 is executed, Remember that we have added an argument here that's passed into it. That is switch number. What's going to happen? First of all, these conditional statements are going to run. And the first question that's going to be asked is if switch number is equal to 1. In other words, if the argument that we passed to this script is 1. If that's the case, then our switch 1 flipped variable, which is our Boolean variable that we made, is going to be set to true. If this is not the case, you know, if the argument is not 1, then we're going to ask another question. We're going to ask if the argument is 2. If that is true, then switch 2 flipped is going to be set to true. And finally, you know, after the if else if, we at, we just go down and we ask a totally brand new if question or if statement. Here we ask if the switch 1 flip variable is true and the switch to flip variable is true. And if this whole line here is true, you know, if both, if both of these variables are equal to true, then the door opens. And so what this results in is uh, both of these switches have to be flipped now in order for the door to be open because the door pretty much depends on the switch one flipped and the switch to flip variables. So we'll compile it. You can see it's compiling without any errors, and that's great. Uh, we're just going to pretty much ignore this first script or this first switch and just go right to these switches. And if everything went to planned, uh, when we flip them both, this door should open right up for us. So let's test the map, see what happens. So 
So you can see it worked perfectly. And you can do this in any order. So let's play the map again and I'm going to do it in the opposite order. All right, so it's working perfectly. Uh, we have learned a lot here today. Hopefully I haven't gotten too far ahead and confused you guys. If I have, I really apologize. Uh, I know this is sort of a long-winded video, but this is a really important topic, and we've covered some awesome things here. Uh, the variables themselves, uh, super useful. Uh, the arguments, which are also incredibly useful, uh, the conditional statements. Without conditional statements, really, you're not going to be able to do much with variables. Conditional statements are where it's at because this allows you to, like I said, test what the variables are and uh, do different things accordingly. Uh, before I you know, conclude this video, I do want to show you guys how you could use conditional statements with uh, uh, things other than uh, like events where you want them to be equal to a number. Let's say we wanted to, to test this argument for some reason and see like if uh, if the argument is greater than zero. What you can do, you, you've probably seen this used a lot just in general like mathematics. You could do something like uh, if switch number and then you could just use the greater than symbol and you could put zero. So this asks if it's greater than zero then you could uh, you know just do whatever. You can also have, uh, of course, you know, less than. That's kind of obvious. Uh, you can do greater than or equal to, which would be just the greater than symbol and then equals. Uh, you can do less than or equal to. And another one that you can do is you can just do, you can test whether it's not equal to something. And you do that by typing the uh, exclamation symbol and then the equal sign. So, you know, in this case, if switch number is anything but zero, then this code is going to run. So uh, that's just a, a little, little more about how you can, uh, you know, run these tests. So you can check whether something's just straight up equal to a number. You can test whether it's just straight up not equal to a number. You can test whether it's uh, greater than or equal to a number, you know, just less than or equal to a number, and so on and so forth. So I think that concludes everything. Uh, hope this has helped you guys out. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, feel free and leave a comment down below. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So this is Chubb signing out.